Why are two Gentiles a new studio host of Zola Lever Presents? How did that happen? Stay tuned and find out. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Levin presents. Welcome to Zola Levitt Presents. I'm Kirsten Hart. And I am David Hart. Today is a special day. We have the producer and the director of Zola Levitt Presents, Ken Berg, with us today. This is probably the first time in a while you've been sitting in front of the camera. You're usually behind it's, the camera. It's the first time, in fact. I have, interv it? I have interviewed people before on camera, but I really much prefer being behind the camera, not in front of the <laughs> well, camera. Well, you look good but, on camera. Well, yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to you both. Thank, thank you, you for being new members of our team as you are. You, you come in and done one little series so far. You did well, and I know each program is going to get even better. Thank you. We're yeah. loving the new series coming up too. It's great. Yeah, it will be. We're going to have some repeats for a while, which you'll introduce. Then we're going to get into a brand new series, and uh, looking forward to that. Good. Where to? You met Zola in the seventies. In Is the seventies. I was but wow. a child. I even have <laughs> I even have notes in front of me because how do you how do you remember thirty eight right. years of highlights? You know, just within a few minutes that we had. How did you meet him? Wow, you know, it started back in nineteen seventy eight. When I had written a little script, a little uh, movie script, very low-budget, shoestring project that I called Wonder Man. It's based on the Antichrist and end times and so forth. And I was wondering who could really be on camera to host this program. And at the time, I had been listening to Zola Levitt on radio. He had a daily radio show. Out of called, Dallas? Out of Dallas okay. called The Heart of the Matter. The Heart. <laughs> and uh, I was so taken by his ability to speak to extemporaneous issues, to speak to Bible issues. People would call in and he'd have answers just like that. I said, this guy is so great. I'd love to meet him one day. So I called him. I said, Zola, I've written a script. <clears throat> would you be the on-camera person for this? And he said, sure. So we, over the course had of one... He, I'm sorry, yeah. had he ever done TV before? He had never done okay, TV so he before. Okay, was just a radio No, man. no, no. Okay. All of this is a God thing. It really is as the story goes along. And so in one day, just a couple hours, he knocked it out really well, and we got to know each other pretty well during the course of that filming. And it was literally film, 16 millimeter film at the time, four Old video school. tape. <laughs> yeah, it was soon thereafter, in the course of doing that, that Channel 39 came to him at about the same time and said, Zola, we have a one hour slot for a Christmas special. Would you like to be the host on this one hour TV special? And Zola came to me and says, Ken, Channel 39, the CBN network station at that time, said, they've come to me, would you like to produce this program? I said, why not? We had a great time with the Wonder Man, why not do this? And we did, we had a great time. I even had Zola up on the rooftop putting a star on top of his <laughs> chimney to the tune of uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, I love it. <laughs> he was, yes, he love that Fiddler, but he's putting it. So um, that kind of launched our video time together. It went very well, and then soon thereafter, Zola came to me and said, well, you know, that went so well, why don't we try this on a weekly basis? Love it. And I've got to give all the credit to Zola, because out of his own pocket, he had to take the money, the funding, to get, get us rolling on the weekly program. And uh, it was soon thereafter, after we had been on the air, maybe a couple months, I think, that CBN Network came to us and said, well, we like what you're doing. Out of Virginia Beach. Out of Virginia right? Beach, it was national, and said, but, um, we'd like to air your program on our network. So that's, in fact, how we started it. The, the national following that to this day has been very important to us. And some of, some of the viewers can even remember those early days. I, I hear from them occasionally. You say, I remember when we started with Zola way back and when. Was there but, any other program out at that time doing what Zola did? Not certainly in the way that we did it. Okay. I think we were one of the first where we would bring the Messianic teachings, the Jewish roots of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and dress it in a different way. Uh, we would take Zola out on location and put him in biblical robes nobody else was doing. And he looked great, you know, with a beard. And 
Uh, he was a musician, yes. and he loved music. He was so proud of his music. If he'd write a new song, can I written this new song? What do you think <laughs> of it? I'd always say it was great, and eventually would wind up being on the program. Any idea how many songs he's written? I've, oh, hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. And to this day, people enjoy listening to his music. We love it. We do. At, the formative, at those formative years, I have to point this out, that Dr. Thomas McCall, a Christian uh, Gentile, was very important to the to the beginning of the ministry. And I bring this up because you being Christians and Gentiles, and some people would say, you know, what's this all about Jewish and, and Gentile? Well, it was formative as, as early years. It was very important then. Good. And it remains important to this day. Dr. Thomas McCall helped Zola write many of his books. He went on location with us to Israel. And we had a, we really did have a great time together. We did musicals, uh, Beloved Thief and others, and this carried on for 25 years. It was a re remarkable run uh, that I cherish to this day. Yep. We've loved watching some of his videos of his teaching, and we're just so sad that we didn't get to meet him mm -hmm. before he passed away in 2006, I believe, from cancer. Is that correct? Yes, I believe that was a year. I'm pretty bad on days, but I think that was correct. And it left us wondering, you know, could this program really continue? Right. And thankfully, his wife, uh, Sandra, came in and helped for a period of time just on her own, another Gentile Christian. Wow. And uh, thereafter, soon thereafter, Dr. Jeffrey Seif <clears throat> came in to help Sandra in, in telling the stories. We, did, we went to Israel together, we went to Greece and so forth, and continued the, the teaching of the Jewish roots of Christianity. What's Jeff's background? Uh, Jeff has been a professor at a number of, of, of uh, Christian universities, institutes of Christ of the Nations here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And we had worked together, in fact, <clears throat> as I did a series for Christ of the Nations many years ago, and understood his ability to communicate on camera. And I said, Jeff, would you take over this program just yourself and carry on? And Big he did. Big shoes to fill. Big shoes right. to fill. So we had a great time together on a number of series. We were in Jeeps traveling around Israel together. And, uh, you can put us in jeeps. We don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> that might we'll happen. go in a jeep. <laughs> that might happen in time. It we might happen that. in time. How many times have you been to Israel? I've been to Israel now 68 <laughs> times. Unreal. <laughs> and you know, it's it's like going home for me every right. time. I love it. Uh, personally, I am. I'm not Jewish. I'm a Christian. I was raised a PK, as they say, a preacher's kid. Yes, me too. And, you know, the fullness and the understanding of the whole messianic element did not become real in my own life until being around Zola and Jeff and those who followed. And I'm still learning, as you guys will be learning too. How's your we, Hebrew? My, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> very bad. I don't mean to put you on the spot. There's no, there's no excuse after all these years why I don't speak Can Hebrew. Can you communicate in Israel? I can find my way to the bathroom. Nice. If I share it to him, <laughs> and I can order a cup of water. Can and low, yes or <laughs> no? Can and low. As you know, can is uh, in Hebrew yes. means yes, mm -hmm. which can right. be very problematic because I think people are talking to me, and they're just saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But uh, I love going to Israel. I really, I really do. So after after Jeff Seif, Catherine and Miles. Catherine and Miles, I had worked with on another project for actually Rosemary Schindler, the Schindler family. Yeah. We had done a video together over there and. Uh, Catherine and Miles were on that on that okay. um, tour, and I saw that they too, just like Jeff, were able to communicate on camera so very well. So I asked them after a period of time, Catherine and Miles, would you join us on, on the program and be the host of the program and travel to Israel? And they said, yeah, they welcomed it, and they jumped on board and did, did a great job and, and appreciate the time years? they spent with us. It's about five or six years. And we still yes. have them on now, so that's great. Yes, they yes, we'll continue to see repeats for a while. And um, we just so do appreciate. To this day, they have a Messianic synagogue in the San Francisco area. And I'd encourage anybody in that area to visit their synagogue and see Miles and Catherine. Can I say this also, that every time that we see a video in each program, which are so great, every, pro, every video that you do from Israel with Jewish actors, that's kin producing those. They're so yeah. good. How do you Another put wonderful. all of that group together and they, they're, they're so good in their acting? Where well, does that come from? Thank you so much. It, it, it's got to come from the Lord. Yes. You know, I, I don't pat myself on the back and saying how great this or that was or whatever. I have a great team that's with me even here in the studio today. Um, and 
the Lord just brought all the pieces together miraculously. It's really great. Hosts such as yourself and the, and the crew members here as well as in Israel um, just kind of show up at our door. What yeah, you have done are. and what you do, especially with the dramatic videos, and uh, not videos, but presentations, reenactments, re yeah. that sets this program apart. So this is who has done all that. <laughs> it is wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. We've not stopped because after Miles and Catherine, now we have David and Kirsten Hart. And we thank you so much for... We're being, honored. For, yeah. Well, Very yeah. much so. Um, it's, you know, it's really is a, it really is a God thing. And I go back to this Jewish Christian element for those who would wonder at home, well, why are you doing this Christian element? It was here from the very beginning with uh, Dr. Tom McCall. Sandra Levitt comes in, I myself, a Christian. And, um, you know, we're all learning together. Right. You look at the, the Gospels, for instance. It's all, it's all the same story about Yeshua. But you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, mm -hmm. all these different aspects, different perspectives of who this Messiah was. So that's what we're doing. We're taking different elements. We will continue to have this Messianic teaching from those in Israel who... And that's our passion also. Yeah. We love it. It's so rich. I mean, we are learning so much. And our eyes have been opened so much more. I come from a background like you did as a pastor's son, and we thought we knew it all about the Bible. <laughs> right. But our eyes, even as we learn, right. and we are dedicated right now to this program and learning more about Zola Levitt and how he taught, but our eyes have been open, and we just we love the teaching that you know once you get a taste of it at least for myself it, it just you want to know more you want right. to know more because the new testament takes on such new life when you understand mm -hmm. the types and shadows of yeshua in the old testament um, and so i'm learning to this very day so the messianic element will continue on this program uh, perhaps even more so we're going to a little bit more of a, a magazine format mm -hmm. program to include uh, multiple Messianic teachers, but all Yeshua, again, is always the center of what we're doing. Right, great people who, who will be teaching. Absolutely. We're excited to meet them and yeah, to yeah. hang with them in Israel. Absolutely. It's be great. Yeah, yeah. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Ken. Now coming up, Wayne Fournier will be with us in the studio. He will be asking David and me about our stories. That's coming up. We live in a topsy-turvy world where news events are sometimes twisted often leading to untruth. Here at Zola Levitt Presents, we believe it's important to tell the truth of God's Word, the Bible, and we believe it should be proclaimed to Israel and the nations. If you believe the same way, please consider us in your monthly giving support. Thank you. For many, a trip to the Holy Land is the dream of a lifetime. The Bible truly comes alive as you see the sites where so many biblical events happened, where the teaching is always from a messianic perspective. Come on a Zola tour in the spring to see Israel and Petra, or in the fall to add a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. See the land of the Bible for yourself. Contact us to reserve your dream of a lifetime. Wayne Fournier is in the studio with us now, and I think we're about to have some questions. <laughs> You're exactly right. You know, earlier, the two of you were interviewing Ken Berg, the executive producer of Zola Lever Presents, asking him all sorts of questions. <laughs> we did. Well, now it's time to turn the tables. Uh oh here we go. <laughs> and that's why I'm here, exactly. Kirsten, I'd like to begin with you first. The last time we were together, you were telling me and all of us how you came to faith in God and in Jesus. And I want to explore a little bit more about the Jewish roots. And when did you become involved? Well, I grew up in the East, East Coast, born in New York and raised in New Jersey. And I went to public school. There were synagogues on every corner. Here, here in Dallas, there are churches on every corner. Back East, there are synagogues on every corner. So it wasn't foreign to me. And I went to uh, school with a girl that was Jewish, and she was one of my best friends. I see. And I remember going to her house around Passover time, and I walked in, and the whole house was covered in foil. And that was new to me. I'd never seen anything like that before, and I realized, you know, now I understand that they were cleaning all the leaven out of the house. Wow. So I grew up going to Seder's. It wasn't 
foreign and it was something that I loved. My parents, I was just talking to them and my mom said, oh my gosh, we loved watching Zola Levitt way back in the 70s and early 80s. Uh -huh. So it's not foreign to me. It's very comfortable and I love the Jewish you lifestyle. grew up around Jewish friends I in did. New Jersey, yeah. and uh, you know a lot of us when we find ourselves in a situation like you just described, you know, we don't necessarily ask questions, especially when we're younger. I, I don't know if you asked many questions of your Jewish friend when you were a I teenager. Didn't. I didn't. I remember thinking, "Could that's really weird to have a whole house filled with foil?" Uh -huh. But she explained a little of it, and I thought, "Okay, that that's great. That's just what they did." So you saw Judaism as a separate religion from Christianity, which it is, but you never really thought about the fact that Christianity came out of Judaism. I didn't think it applied to me. I, I, I understood what they were doing, and it was just kind of like, well, that's what they do, and we do something different. I know that sounds horrible, but so many of us have been raised that way and yeah. taught that that's for the Jewish people and this is for the Christians. It wasn't, we didn't even have the word Gentile. That wasn't even in, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. even in my vocabulary. It was Christians and Jewish people, and, and there was a separation. Is that horrible? Well, not really. <laughs> not, when did you come to think of it differently, though? When did you say to yourself, I want to know more about the Jewish roots of Christianity? I attended Bible college back in 1984. That will date me. I'm 51. There, there <laughs> world. I'm 51 years old. <laughs> and proud of it. <laughs> I love it. But when I went to Bible college, one of my first classes I had a professor and he told us, he said, now, and this is literally the first class, he said, I want you to forget about everything that you've learned. Everything that a Bible teacher or Sunday school teacher or your pastor taught you, wipe it clean, the slate is clean. And, and at first I thought, that's horrible. Who really? does that? You know, that's just against what I believe in. And he said, wipe it clean because now I want you to build your faith on what you have learned not what someone else taught you, what you have learned and what you have walked through in your life. Read through the Bible. I mean, we just, it was kind of a eat it up and digest it mm -hmm. and then know why I believe what I believe. And that was a wonderful foundation to learn more about our Jewish heritage and our roots. I'll bet you read the Bible with new eyes. I did and I fell asleep on it a lot too. <laughs> I didn't that, swear. When you read through Old Testament Leviticus, sometimes mm. you fall asleep. That it was it's wonderful, yes. but you can get sleepy. But I, I learned so much in our first trip to Israel opened my eyes to learn more about truth and things that we have been taught here in Christianity, and it's wonderful in our churches, but we've been taught by so many people that don't have a Jewish perspective and have never been to Israel. And walking those streets opened my eyes to, oh, there's so much more. And some of the things that we've learned are off. And when you, when you combine it with the Jewish knowledge, then it comes together and makes sense. You have had quite a journey, Kirsten Hart. It's just beginning. And we're glad to have you here at Zola Levitt Presents. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, we're coming right back with David Hart, but... Right now we want to show you something from our popular prophecy series, Times of the Signs. We have a preview for you, so let's take a look. And yet today, we see incredible tension as the story of the Hebraic Messiah, the Jewish story, the history of Bethlehem, is being rewritten and reinterpreted in order to fit into a new version of replacement theology. The number of Christians that are turning against Israel in yeah. foolishness, yes. and they're heeding the devil's message, mm -hmm. because 
God has still kept his promise. The nation that blesses Israel is going to be blessed. One and a half percent of Europe is born again Christians. Shocking. And I shared that recently with a friend from the UK. He says one and a half percent might be generous. I was going to say it's an exaggeration, right? So wow. that's, that's just incredible. It's so hard for us to comprehend that. So uh, you have an anti Semitic root and you have a continent that's void of a personal, intimate relationship with the Messiah, Jesus of, of Israel. Hello and welcome back. We're in the studio with David and Kirsten Hart, the new host of the Zola Levitt Presents show. We just finished speaking with your wife and learning about her, David, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about your growing up and coming to faith in Christ and Yeshua, and uh, tell us about that. Sure. I grew up in Southern California, and at a young age, I believe I was two years old, when my pastor, who's also my father, and my musical mother would Your have me. Your preacher's kid. Yes. They would have me standing on a chair in between them. I can remember, I, I don't know if I remember, but I, I think I have a picture of me at two years old standing on a chair singing gospel music with them. Well, now, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, music is a big part of your ministry, your life. It and, is my life. And you're bringing that to, yeah. uh, to this ministry. Tell us about that, please. Well, let's see. Growing up uh, in a pastor's home, my dad was not only a pastor, but he sings. Um, actually, I'm wondering if he's singing in heaven now. He is in heaven. Mm. And uh, his first minister of music way back in the, what, 50s, 60s, possibly? I can't I, remember. I how. wasn't even born then. I believe it was the 60s. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was a guy by the name of Bill Gaither that some of you may know. I've heard that name, yeah. Yes. And uh, let's see, his piano player, our accompanist every week was Sandy Patty. So I grew up with some really great musicians. So you learned a thing or two about music. I did, as, and, as an early age. And uh, you sing now. I do sing now. Love singing Zola We're going to be hearing from you singing later on, I believe, in this show. And, and certainly that's something that you do bring to the ministry. Now, how has learning about the Jewish roots of your Christianity and bringing that together with your music, how do you see that impacting? what you have to say to people now on this show. Sure, I've got to say this too, that our son living in Israel is learning so much about his Jewish roots, and we want to learn also that he doesn't know more than we do. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> That may be hard to do since he lives there. That's right. I know the Zola songs talk so much about Jewish roots, and we're loving bringing his songs back. Well, good. Let's hear it now. Here it is, David Hart with Yeshua. Yeshua, you came unto our fathers. Yeshua, you came to us alone. Yeshua, the lost sheep of Israel. Yeshua, you came unto our own. Yeshua, the lost sheep of Israel. Yeshua, you came unto our David Hart, Yeshua, I know Zola would be pleased. And we're honored. Thank you. Our new series titled Called Together 
is coming soon and it's still being edited. We'd love to give you a sneak peek. Here it is. When I discovered this story, I was, I was really uh, quite astounded to find the degree of cooperation that existed between King Solomon and King Hiram. As a matter of fact, it was right along this bay, these waters are where Hiram brought cedar trees from Lebanon all the way to Jerusalem to help build the temple. This is the story that's found in 1 Kings 5 and it starts with an amazing statement. Here we are in Judea and Samaria, what some call the West Bank, in what the United Nations calls a settlement. Yes, this is the very place where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob lived, dug their wells, planted their vineyards. This is right where the sun stood still, where the walls of Jericho fell. Uh, this is the very place that I was married. Not far away from where the tabernacle rested for 369 years. When us Jewish people get married, we step on what we call the Cup of Covenant, much like this and we seal the deal. Since 1998, after Rwandan genocide, we were praying, uh, seeking the peace of Rwanda. Then in uh, our prayer, the Lord speak to us to pray for Jerusalem if we want to have a peace in our country. It was a little complicated. We say, how can we pray for Jerusalem, Israel, when we have problems in Rwanda. We come from genocide and many people couldn't believe that. Shalom. Ma nishma. Ma nishma. How are you? What's up? When you meet somebody that speaks Hebrew for the first time, you don't be scared or like be very polite. You just be friendly and probably that would be an icebreaker. Ma nishma. What's up? We think you're going to love our new series called Together. It's yes. a brand new format, more kind of magazine style. And every week we will have our friend Eitan Shishkov from Israel present the meat, the messianic right. teaching, which is so good. We also love Chaim Mailspin, who is on location in Israel. He was an IDF soldier. Yes. He's strong and also he has wonderful insight into the Bible. Oh, and we also have every program will have a Hebrew lesson. Can't wait for that. It's going to be great. We love to end our program with this prayer, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS or you can purchase it from our store at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Thanks again for joining us this week. Zola Levitt Ministries and this television program depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.